Well, it's been a busy week in Parliament with gay marriage, asylum seekers and the national broadband network dominating debate. To discuss the developments and to look at what lies ahead, I'm joined by Labor MP Stephen Jones in Sydney and from Melbourne Liberal MP Josh Frydenberg. Welcome to both of you. Good afternoon, Ali. Good day, Josh. Good day, Stephen. Hi, Ali. <laughs> well, the uh, powerful union boss, Joe De Bruyne. I want to start with you, Stephen Jones, because Joe De Bruyne's been making some headlines today saying that uh, Labor faces electoral suicide if it allows itself to be distracted by the Greens' issues such as gay marriage. And you made some headlines this week coming out in a speech advocating gay marriage. Are you pandering to the Greens? Absolutely not. Look, Joe's saying two things in essence. The first thing I agree with, and that is the core business uh, of the Gillard Labor government is dealing with the big fundamental economic issues of the day. It's dealing with our infrastructure, rolling out the national broadband network, keeping unemployment low, creating jobs. We're up to 600,000. We're looking at 600,000 new jobs in the economy over the last four years. Core economic issues. I agree with Joe on that. I just don't happen to agree with his view on marriage equality and we'll have an opportunity to debate that out But his point seems to be that it's, it's, uh, you're losing the middle ground, that it's not a bread and butter issue, that you're pandering to a cause of the green. I just ha don't happen to agree with Joe on that one issue. Do you think it's a bread I and think, butter issue? I think the majority of the things that we are dealing with in the 43rd term uh, parliament will be those core bread and butter issues. Is gay marriage a bread and butter issue? Keeping unemployment low and dealing with the infrastructure deficit. The voters but expect I think more. We're, I the think voters we're expect able, more, Stephen. Uh, I'll, you'll get your turn in a moment, uh, Josh, uh, but good to hear you again. Uh, we are capable of walking and chewing gum, and that's the point. Well, we are capable of doing more than one thing at a time. Josh Frydenberg in Melbourne, uh, what's your position on gay marriage? Well, firstly, we know that Julia Gillard has lost control of the agenda to the Greens. But now we've seen that she's lost control of her own party because people like Stephen and Mark Abib and uh, the member for Fremantle have felt that they can challenge the leader's position on this. On our side, we're pretty consistent. And my position is I absolutely support equal rights for, for same-sex couples. And I'm very proud of what the coalition was able to achieve in 2004 when it changed the rules around superannuation to allow for interdependency and we supported a number of other measures but I've taken the traditional view of marriage which I see as between a man and a woman Stephen. and I think this and I think that the Australian people want us to get on to the issues like the NBN and economic management two areas where this government has very graphically failed and I'll get to those issues in a moment but in your electorate is it a pressing issue Stephen Jones I don't think it is a pressing issue, although there are a, a, a number of people in my electorate, many of whom have rung me or emailed me over the last month and said, we'd like the parliament to, uh, to consider this issue and we'd like you as our local, local representative to consider this issue. And there's one thing I, I can tell you, Ali, I've had far more mail in favour of the proposition than I have had opposing it, far more, a factor of 10 to 1. What about the broader debate inside Labor at the moment? And that is, you know, have you outsourced the left of your party in essence? I mean, who is driving the government's agenda? No, look, the party is driving the government's agenda and we've got a big agenda uh, for this term of government. It starts with dealing with infrastructure, dealing with the deficit uh, uh, of investment in infrastructure. It deals with health. It deals with our big education agenda and continuing to create jobs and keep unemployment low. And you've only got to look at what the OECD report on the, on the state of our economy said just yesterday, that we are incredibly in incredibly good shape. That is the overwhelming uh, agenda for the government. But we are able to walk and chew gum, you know. We're able to do more than one thing at a time. Josh Frydenberg, <laughs> that's a convincing argument, is it not? Able to walk and uh, chew gum? Absolutely not. It's been a humiliating week for Julia Gillard and she's had to fly overseas. I think Julia to seek Gillard has had one of the best weeks uh, in the, Parliament. On the, on the, on the, on in the floor a long, of the long Parliament, time, and you guys, Ali, are, you guys Ali, are shaking the in the boots the every time she gets up. Yeah, because he's, he's trying to interrupt me now because he knows that this is the fact. On the floor of the Parliament this week, Labor was defeated 74 to 1 on a key, um, on, on a key issue of releasing their so called cost benefit benefit analysis of the NBN. Defeated 74 to 1. And 74 quickly, to the, what? 74 the, to 71? 70, Did the vote get up or not, Josh? Did the vote get up or not? Did the vote get up or not? Stephen, here's the point. 
the NBN is becoming the albatross around Julia Gillard's neck. Keep what have you got it. to hide? What have you got to hide by releasing the cost assumptions, the price assumptions around the NBN? You commissioned a KPMG McKinsey study that merely cost $25,000 per page. Now we've got the report that apparently will tell us some of these cost Josh assumptions Feinberg, and you won't release let's them. Let's Stephen Jones respond. Let's talk about the big telecommunications story no, of the but, week. But, but we are going, we are absolutely not? going to deal with that, Ali. Let's talk about the whole meal and not just the peas on the end of the plate. The whole meal and not just the peas on the end of the plate. This Let's is talk a about report. it. The big story of the week is that after <laughs> 20 years of inaction by the other side, we uh -huh. introduced and got legislation through the upper house to structurally separate Telstra. Thereby creating, thereby creating real competition in the telecommunications market. Now let's talk about uh, the NBN the business plan because that is important plan. as well. It's a part of our overall plan for the telecommunications market, something that your side, Josh, failed on after 19 and a half plans in your 12 years in government. You still couldn't get it right. We got it right. We got it through the lower house, and the challenge is on you whether you'll support that bill in the upper house now. But NBN and the uh, business plan. Here's uh, the story. He's getting there, Josh. Here's the story, Josh, and and you'll be we pleased. We have time to limits in the parliament, we but not are, obviously on We this are show. doing exactly the same thing with the NBN business plan. As both sides of public, as both sides of parliament have done with the business plans of all government business enterprises, whether we're talking about the ARTIS, the Rail Track Corporation, or Medibank Private, uh, or Australia but, Post, but Stephen Jones, they the, do not get released. If the government is this in a is position sad. to brief the independents mm -hmm. next week, yes, why is it and not going will. to be in a we position to, through, to make it public? Ali, it's a good question. We will go through the normal processes, the normal processes, and they are this: that the report will be received by the minister. The minister then submits it to cabinet. Cabinet will look and dis look at and discuss uh, and be briefed upon the business plan. And then we will ensure that there aren't commercial inconfidence uh, segments of that report that are provided there by giving Telstra or Optus or any other players in the market an overwhelming advantage by getting early access to that information. That stuff will be removed and then, and then it will be re released Ali. to Just the other side Is of politics. Is that not a fair thing? Uh, Ali, can I just say, I think I misheard Stephen say that the NBM would introduce competition into the sector. It's actually creating, no, the government has it's introduced actually creating a monopoly, and he quotes selectively from the OECD report. The OECD report said they had great concerns that the NBN, through its monopolistic practices, would be removing competition from the sector. What has this government to hide when it won't refer the NBN to the Productivity Commission. What does it have to hide when it won't allow Infrastructure Australia to have a proper look at it? It's got something to hide, and that is the fact that it hasn't done the numbers. It hasn't crunched the numbers, and there is $43 billion that this government is prepared to waste at great cost to the taxpayer. That's the issue. And it's Stephen, do, you want to, do you want to respond to that, we've particularly, I guess, the Productivity we've got, Commission? We've got absolutely nothing to hide, but we do have 12 years of inaction to deal with. Yes, there was a monopoly in the telecommunications industry. It was called Telstra. And because the Howard government was so hopelessly compromised, uh, because they on the one hand wanted to maximise the share price of Telstra and therefore could not do anything to decrease its value by introducing real competition into the telecommunications market, they were hamstrung for 12 years. And now we have moved in the parliament to break up that monopoly and ensure that there will be real competition in the telecommunications. Joshua it's Friedenberg, a waste money. It, even if you got this 400-page business plan in your hands, would, you, would it convince you if it, if it uh, is an appropriate business plan? Will it change the view of the coalition? But, but it's not an appropriate business plan. How do you know? Plan. You haven't Listen, seen it. This is not an appropriate business plan because everyone knows that. And this government might even release the red book that and, uh, in the lead up to the election, which would indicate some of the details behind and the and the uh, d um, department's concerns with the NBN. And for, for, unfortunately for Stephen Conroy, the Senate has now passed a resolution forcing him to do this. It's all about control. This government will not be transparent with the public. This is the biggest infrastructure project ever of which undertaken. Of we are very proud. In, ever undertaken of which we in are Australia. very proud. 
and it and it is just growing and growing and growing, and no one is controlling its costs. And the pr the rollout in Tasmania has had its problems, but this government is in denial, and the parliament, through a vote of 74-71, has made it very clear it wants to see this report. Does that parliamentary vote? Say it, tell and you the, that? Yeah, it not and tell Ali, you that? after we go through the normal processes that have been followed by governments from time immemorial, we will release the port, report. And look, I, I think Josh's comments Denial. just there really do bell the cat. I mean, Tony Abbott and the Liberals under Tony Abbott have taken opposition to new, new heights because what we heard Josh <laughs> say, and this is yeah, their case... Right. It doesn't matter whether they see the business case or not. They're opposed to it. Let, let's, General, we only have a few minutes left, and I do want to move on to another issue because, of course, the Prime Minister is winging her way to NATO talks as we speak. And I know uh, that while you made a speech today or, or this week in Parliament on gay marriage, Josh Frydenberg, you spoke this week in Parliament on the war in Afghanistan. What should Julia Gillard be telling those NATO talks? Um, I think she should be telling them that Australia wants to stay the course. Uh, we are the, ma the largest non-NATO contributor with 1,550 troops in the field and they are really making a difference. And in Afghanistan, we are seeing the benefits of the international community's support. And this is a very difficult, but were we to leave prematurely and leave a vacuum, then Al-Qaeda and its supporters would fill that vacuum. And we know that the terrorists who attacked Australian, Australians in Bali and elsewhere and took their lives, including in 9-11, had links back to Afghanistan. So this is an absolutely critical mission for us to stay the course. And I think you know, that is the, measure, the message that came out on a bipartisan nature from the debate over the last couple of weeks. Indeed, it was a largely bipartisan debate, as you say. But Stephen Jones, there are many reports this morning that Australia has been repeatedly asked for more troops, although that has been consistently denied at the prime ministerial level. Should Australia send more troops? Ali, um, I, I've looked into this and uh, I'm advised uh, that there has been no formal request of the government. And what's I know the you probably. Of formal? What, as where does it go to? As I'm advised, uh, the US government is very satisfied with not only our commitment but our level of troops in Afghanistan and Osgar has done. And, and if we were asked for more? And I just want to make this point, and you probably did want to uh, end on, on a debate or a bit of a dust up, but there's one thing that Josh and I are, are in heated agreement on. We both made significant statements in our first speech on, and that is our commitment to the US alliance. And in demonstration of that commitment, our commitment to the war in Afghanistan. And if the US asked for more, more troops? Uh, as I said, uh, uh, on the advice that's been given to me, there has been no request for additional troops. They are very satisfied with the great work that our troops are doing uh, in Afghanistan. And let's not forget that we've, given, we've put in, in the field significant increases in troops over the last 12 months. And indeed, but we're Ali... the biggest non-NATO supplier to that war effort. Jo Joshua Frydenberg, if we were asked for more troops? Well, I absolutely think that Julie Gillard should tell the Australian public, even if it's an informal request, what has been told to her. And as Tony Abbott had said in this Afghanistan debate, our 1,550 uh, troops in the field should not be seen as an artificial cap on our numbers, uh, but rather an average over time. And it should respond to what are the demands on the ground. So um, that's our position. There's a bit more flexible than Labor's. But if there has been a request from the Americans, even, in for, even if it's informal, then it's incumbent upon Julia Gillard to tell the Australian public. Well, we know that uh, we'll find out exactly what he said uh, fairly soon because, of course, Julia Gillard is not staying for very long on the ground. I think she's back on Monday morning for the last sitting week of Parliament. Joshua Frydenberg in Melbourne and Stephen Jones in Sydney. Many thanks for joining us. Good to be with you. Thanks, Helen. Well, the Solomon Islands Police.